Today, I'm gonna be reviewing your Etsy shops. We're gonna be looking at what works, what doesn't, and hopefully you can learn something that can make you more money. Now, I got hundreds of submissions on my free Discord, so if I don't get to your shop today, be sure to like the video and leave a comment, and maybe I'll make another one of these in the future. Starting off in no particular order, we've got a shop that looks like it's selling wall art. Now, obviously, right off the bat, there's a few things that I noticed, but they're actually not doing too bad. So they already have 50 sales, and compared to the 100 listings, that's a really good listing to sales ratio. Usually it takes a lot of listings to start getting sales. Now, just by looking at some of these products, there's a few areas for improvement. For one, they don't have a sale going, and they're using the default mock-up, but somehow they're already getting sales coming in. If we take a look at one of the listings here, you can see that it's probably because they're using really good SEO and a very well-targeted product. So this product appears to be of Alan Watts. I don't know who that is, but it's some kind of Zen meditation Buddhist painting. And so they're able to target that really well and they've just created a good product that people interested in this niche might wanna buy. And it looks like that's kind of their target audience overall. You know, they have some more of these kind of maybe Hindu meditation style art pieces that are probably what continues to sell. Now as a baseline, there's only a few things that you need to focus on to get a ton of sales in your shop. These are the three elements that you have to focus on to get a bunch of sales. You have the customer fit, which is making products for the Etsy customers. You're making products that they want to buy. And you have to have quality products. Then it's building trust with your products by the packaging that you use, the mock-ups, and the info cards. Packaging meaning how you're displaying your product in the Etsy marketplace. And you have the awareness, which is how you're marketing your product. Obviously, we use SEO, we use discounts, you can use free social media content, even though I don't do that, and your listing quantity. Those are the ways that you drive traffic. So if we take a look here, obviously, they have really good SEO for their targeted artwork, so there's good customer fit, Seems like they're using a good awareness model, but they don't have a lot of listings and their mockups aren't that great. So if they keep doing what they're doing and they improve their mockups and the amount of listings they have, they'll continue to make good sales. Now, if you wanna see me review shops that are selling the product you're selling, I'll have those in the chapters down below. But for now, this next shop, that's also selling digital download artwork. Now this one's really interesting because they have 41 sales, so they are starting to get a little bit of traffic. They have a lot of listings. And so Martin has followed my advice and posted a lot of products here, but they're not getting a ton of sales just yet. Obviously, I always hammer home the importance of having a ton of listings because it's one of the most effective ways to actually ensure that you're gonna get sales. So what's going on here, where he's posted almost a thousand products and only has 41 sales? Honestly, the packaging and the designs, they look really good. He's got a professional logo, he's using a nice mock-up, and the artwork, it looks really good. But again, I have to remind you, we have to think about the customer fit. Who's going to be buying our products? If we think about this before we ever make the product, is going to save us a lot of time. Now, I'm not saying that he made this art just by thinking it was cool, but when you think about who's going to be buying these specific pieces, it's hard to put a specific market on them. A lot of the artwork here, while it does look really good, it's very general, and it's hard to pin down exactly who's going to be buying any of these pieces. And again, even though he does have a lot of listings, you have to pay attention to the SEO. This doesn't look like very good SEO because he's only really adding one line to specify who this artwork is for. Etsy already knows this is artwork. They know it's gonna be a digital download. So you need to tell them exactly what keywords the customers are going to be searching for in order for this product to be coming up. So while it looks really good, and personally, you know, maybe if I was a whiskey lover, I would buy this, but it only looks like he has maybe two tags that are relevant to what the artwork is and one line in the title. So unfortunately, even though this seller has posted a ton of products and they look really good, he's packaged them well, he's followed a lot of the advice, he's missing on a couple of the most important areas, which is making products for specific customers and then targeting them with the SEO. If he had the same quality designs, but he was targeting customers a little bit better and then actually adding SEO in the title and tag section, he would be absolutely killing it with 900 listings. If we compare that to this shop, Lexington Prince, which I believe opens 
almost exactly a year ago today, uh, you can see that it, they're doing very similar things. Both of their artworks look really good and the quality looks really good. But the thing that they're doing differently over here is you can see that while it's still just kind of a generic painting, they're targeting people very specifically. I mean, look at how targeted this title is. They reinforce that it's for Easter, it's got bunny ears, and that's the exact type of person that they want to see this product, right? They're making sure that when someone puts in one of these keywords, this wall art is going to show up. And unfortunately, I don't think Martin was doing that in his shop. Now for the last digital product submission, this shop, it only has 170 listings, but they've already gotten 131 sales. So if we take a look at what they're doing right and wrong, you can see that obviously their products, they look nice. Now it looks like they only really have one style, which is kind of this watercolor style, but it's working so far. And then if we take a look at their products, you can see that they do have really good SEO. So they have a lot of you know, relevant keywords to what the product is. So it's a specific product for the Etsy shoppers, and then they're targeting those Etsy shoppers in the title. And they also have, looks like some supporting keywords in the tag section. So as far as I can tell, this is a pretty solid listing. The only thing that they need to do is keep posting more listings and maybe expand some of their styles so that they can reach more people that aren't just interested in the watercolor niche and they're gonna be good to go. Now we have one of my favorite products because it's made me the most successful, and that's apparel. Apparel always seems to be probably the most confusing product for you guys to sell, and I'm not entirely sure why. So this was a shop that was submitted, 37 sales, 100 listings. You know, they haven't really put up that many listings, but there's some clear things that they can be doing better here. Obviously the mock-ups aren't really Etsy vibe mock-ups. You know, they're kind of just a mock-up that they got off you know, some generic stock website, but their designs are what really matter and they honestly aren't too bad. It's just that we have to remember the customer fit, okay? We're making products for the people that shop on Etsy. And if I'm looking at this shop, I don't really see how these products, you know, fit the people that are shopping on Etsy. A couple of them might, but you have to remember that we're not here just to make cool designs or just to have cool products. If we wanna get sales, we have to make products for the customers. We're not making stuff because we like it. Trust me, I made a lot of designs that I didn't wanna make or that I personally would never buy, but it's not for me, right? You're making the products for the customers. This is the same thing that I'm talking about, okay? So if your shop looks like this, you're just not gonna get a lot of sales, right? So for one, does any of this build trust, right? Does the packaging, do the mock-ups, Nothing here really builds trust. It kind of looks like maybe it looks more like an eBay shop or something like that. You know, you're using very generic mock-ups. There's no SEO. Like this is pretty much what you want to do if you don't want to get sales. So not to be rude to this person, but they definitely need to completely change their strategy if they're serious about this. Again, I can't drive home the importance of these three core elements, your customer fit, the trust, and your awareness. If we look at a shop like this that was submitted from my Discord, right? The designs here, they don't actually look that bad. But the problem is they're on terrible mockups, they're not running a sale, and if we take a look at the actual listing, it doesn't look like they're putting a lot of effort into the listing. It just looks like they're kind of throwing something together. So it's so important to build trust around your products by having good mockups and again, a targeted product, right? If your products aren't targeted for people who are shopping on Etsy, then you're not gonna get any sales. Now, if you wanna have a successful shop like this one where they opened about 10 months ago and they already have 10,000 sales, about 1,000 sales a month or maybe $5,000 a month in profit, pay attention to what they're doing really well. They have great designs on great mockups and then if we take a look at one of their listings, they have great SEO packed into the title and they have good SEO in the tag section. So every step of the process is being followed here. And they have about 700 listings. Now, to be clear, some shops take a lot more listings than that. For me, it took about 4,000 listings before I was making six figures in profit each year. But every step of the process is followed. They have a great customer fit for their products, right? Etsy shoppers are looking for their products. They're building trust with their packaging, mock-ups and info cards, and they're spreading awareness by making a lot of listings and having great SEO on their products. Here's another apparel example of the same exact thing. Again, they opened 10 months ago. So this isn't some outdated strategy. 
and they already have 11,000 sales, over 1,000 sales a month already. And again, they're just following the same principles. They're making targeted designs. Again, I don't think this shop owner is the best designer. They just have good mock-ups, good-ish designs. You know, their designs are okay. And then if we take a look, they're packing SEO into the title and into the tag section. And so by following these three core principles, these three elements, they're able to make, you know, a few thousand sales, over 11,000 sales in less than 10 months. And again, I feel like I'm always coming back to the same principles and a lot of the stuff that you can control. So you can obviously get better at designing, which you do by making more products, have good SEO in your listings and at good mock-up images. And when you're able to do those things, you really do grow. Otherwise you can just give up, right? There's kind of the two options there. For the next product, let's look at this mug shop. So at first glance, I like what I see. You know, they have 48 sales, 341 listings, and the products look pretty good. So I like that they have a custom product. Obviously custom products are easier to sell. But they also have some good pre-made designs. And just by scrolling through here, it looks like they're going for, you know, some of the kind of funny saying designs. And they also have some with graphics in them. Now, at first glance, it really does look like, you know, this is a well-established, well-put-together mug shop. But the thing that I'm noticing is on a lot of these listings, they're not filling in all of the SEO. And so while some of them have good SEO, or at least have SEO in general, a lot of these listings don't have any SEO. You know, five words is not enough to get your product to rank. You have to put keywords that people are searching so that your product will show up. They don't have any tags and they don't have hardly any title in their products. Again, that's not for all of their products, but for a lot of them, that seems to be the case. So if they were to just add good SEO to all of their products, they'd probably start doing better and then they can start making more designs and posting more products. To be clear, this is a competitive game. So while it might look like some shops are winning with a lot less listings, sometimes you just have to make more listings. And if you're not willing to, someone else like me will. And those are the people that end up making the six figures in profit each year. Now, this is the first shop out of all the submissions that I saw that had over a thousand listings. They have 2000 listings here. They've already done 632 sales. So just by looking at their shop, they're clearly doing some things right, but that's a lot of listings for, you know, not the most amount of sales so far. So they're kind of all over the place. They're selling, you know, digital download graphics, they have Tumblr wraps, they have SVGs. And the first thing that I notice is that they're not really selling a consistent product, it doesn't seem like. For example, they have a ton of clip art downloads, they've got a bunch of these black and white SVGs, but primarily they're selling these Tumblr wraps. And the thing about these Tumblr wraps is that they don't seem very specifically targeted to any particular customer. Some of them are cool designs, don't get me wrong, but I don't know who is going to be buying these. Again, the big successful Tumblr art shops like this one that opened just about a year ago and has already made 34,000 sales, they're just making a little bit more targeted designs for people that are buying these Tumblr wraps. As a seller, you have to look at what products are selling and make more products like the ones that are selling. For this shop, if you're gonna double down on the Tumblr wraps, I would really figure out what type of Tumblr wraps are selling. Maybe it's packs of certain types of Tumblr wraps. And I'd really focus on getting those to work before you try making stuff that's probably not selling here on Etsy. Again, to sound like a broken record, the customer fit really matters. Now, this is a pretty interesting submission. They've gotten 174 sales and they have 420 products posted for sale. And what's interesting about this shop is they're selling all different kinds of products. So you can see they've got phone cases, they've got t-shirts, they've got stickers. They even have more products listed here like tumblers, you know, gaming mats, mugs. So they're definitely not a one product shop, which is what I always recommend running because you're able to focus in and master selling one product. Be able to make great designs for it and figure out how to get that product to sell without trying to spread yourself too thin, right? They're trying to repurpose designs to get more sales per design. But in reality, what ends up happening is they only do it, you know, half as good as they could. So what I'm noticing here, they're not running a sale and their designs are kind of all over the place. If they're making all of these kind of like they are cool designs, but again, who are these designs for, right? They're not for the Etsy customers. They're because this seller thinks they look cool. 
When you focus on one product, I promise you it makes it a little bit easier to master selling that product so that you can actually scale to six figures. Here's another submission, 237 sales with about 450 products. And again, this one's pretty interesting. It looks like their designs are really well made for the Etsy algorithm, right? For Etsy buyers, like their designs are well made for those people, but I would definitely try to improve their mockups. I mean, is this a, is this a coaster or something? You know, this is a, it's a magnet. So I would try and improve, you know, the mock-up of the image so that customers can better tell what the product is, but keep doing what you're doing. Now, again, I always recommend a one product shop, but if it seems to be working where you're kind of selling a collection of these themed products, then maybe don't take that piece of advice and see if you can keep running with it. I've just always found that doubling down on one specific product is always more efficient than trying to sell tote bags and wine tumblers and mugs and magnets and all of the products in the same shop. It just never works out as well. This seller is clearly skilled at making products for the Etsy shoppers. So I would just pick one product and double down on selling that one product and theme your entire shop around it and see if that doesn't help out. Now this shop's very interesting as well. And they have no sales, but they only have 12 products posted for sale but they have a very interesting kind of theme going on here. So for one, I think their designs look really good. Obviously this targets the Etsy shopper, uh, their mockups look great and they're, they have a great you know, design template where they're just saying a word like wise AF, right? So that's their entire branding so far, but if they're able to make more products and then they follow other recommendations like adding a sale in, I definitely think that this shop has potential Again, you just have to make the products. You have to be willing to post the products. Otherwise, no one's gonna find them. And more importantly, nobody's gonna buy. Again, this can really be done with anything. A while back, I posted a video talking about how you can make stickers with AI. And this sticker shop popped out of nowhere. You can see that it opened up just about six months ago as well. And they've already done over 40,000 sales. Now, granted, they do have a thousand stickers posted for sale, but that's kind of what's required if you wanna have one of these mega shops. Again, to kind of bring all of these lessons back, you have to make products that fit the Etsy buyers. You have to make the product with the shopper in mind. You're not making anything just because you think it looks cool. And you also have to have quality products. If you're selling print on demand or digital products, both products have to be quality, otherwise you're not gonna be successful. You have to build trust with your customers. You do that through the packaging, which is how everything looks together, how your shop is built. You do it with your mock-ups. You know, how well do your mock-ups fit the Etsy marketplace? Your info cards, which describe the products. And then your awareness. Do you have good SEO in your title and your tags section to drive traffic to all of your listings? You can't slack on any one of these elements or you're not gonna get sales. Are you running a discount? Do you post social media content? Again, that's the only optional one on here. I don't post free social media content. I only go with listing quantity, right? I post a ton of listings and that's the way that we kind of overwhelm the algorithm and we ensure that eventually, if we follow these key elements enough, we're going to get sales. So yeah, I hope that that kind of shines some light on what you need to be doing to actually grow your shop and get sales. And even though it might feel like you're doing the work, maybe you're not quite doing the exact work that you need to be doing. If you want me to make another one of these videos where I review your shops again, be sure to let me know in the comment section down below. And as always,